today on Images. Two outstanding students received the Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Scholarship from COD. Find out why the world needs designers. And College of DuPage hosts the annual Dare to Dream Conference for young Latina women promoting the importance of continued education. All of that and more on this edition of Images. There's always a lot happening at College of DuPage, and Images is a great way to keep up with it all. I'm your host, Rio Almaria, Admissions Representative at College of DuPage. The Rev. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Scholarship is awarded each year to two esteemed COD students who hold a GPA of 3.0 or higher and plan to impact the lives of others based on the teachings of Dr. King. This year's recipients. Annie Tudor and Amira Abarquab demonstrated how their lives were impacted and how they intend to influence others during their acceptance speeches. Welcome to the 2019 Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Scholarship Reception. I am pleased to celebrate the life and work of Dr. King and our institution's commitment to student success for all students, a mantra that starts at the top. The Martin Luther King Scholarship has been awarded at the College of DuPage for approximately 20 years. Um, it is meant to uh, recognize someone who has demonstrated the values of peace and social justice that Dr. King espoused. Ever since elementary school, when I first learned about MLK, I have been intrigued by his humbleness and effective leadership. I began to envision myself in his footsteps because if MLK can rise from the ashes of discrimination, bigotry, racism, hate, etc., yet still emerge as a respectable and constructive human being, then what can stop me? Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. We are not immune from the afflictions of the world and consequently, the world does not benefit when we when only one part flourishes. This is a strong ideal I hope to live by for the rest of my personal and professional life. Dr. Martin Luther King said, if a man hasn't discovered something that he's willing to die for, he isn't fit to live. He believed that passion is important in order to reach success. He believed that each indivi individual deserves equality and justice. And I believe that every woman who has suffered from commercial sexual exploitation deserves a new start and a fresh perspective to achieve her great purposes in this life. I want to leave you all with just the encouragement to never lose hope because sometimes people that are close to losing hope are some of the people you would never ever believe. So that's my charge today is just if you can't walk, crawl, if you can't crawl, move forward, but please just move forward. And thank you so much for helping me move forward in my education. For more on the two recipients or the scholarship and to hear their full speeches, search MLK Scholarship on the COD webpage at cod.edu. Coming up next, the Interior Design Program at College of DuPage prepares students to build impressive portfolios and enter a growing profession.
There's so much more to interior design than I think people realize. To be a designer means to create a comfortable space for people to enjoy. It lets me use my creativity in a totally different dynamic. I love picking uh, fabrics and putting them together and being like, this works, like this is, this is it. Like, it's like a puzzle piece. I just want people to say wow when they walk into a space that I designed. I like to be able to create spaces that make people feel good. The world needs interior designers to plan, create, improve, and beautify the spaces where people live and work, making them accessible, environmentally friendly, comfortable, and functional. The Interior Design Program at College of DuPage prepares students to work as designers in an exciting and growing profession that is both creative and practical. Dealing with space from raw nothing all the way through to a completed space where people are going to live, work, have fun. We touch everything on the interior of a space. The way that you uh, function in a space actually sets the mood for your entire day. In order for people to lead safe and happy and fulfilled lives, um, if their space works for them, then they work better, they work smarter. So there is a, quite a bit of responsibility interior designers hold. Students can earn an associate degree or one of three certificates, kitchen and bath, lighting, and computer applications. The curriculum has really been tiered, so one level builds on to the next, and by the time you're done, you are able to do a complete project in any number of different areas of practice. Our industry embraces the technical, it embraces the uh, creative, it also embraces the sales aspect. You have to have those interpersonal skills to be able to sell your designs because basically that's what you are doing. You're selling yourself as a designer and you're selling your design project. Hands-on experiences combined with in-depth classroom instruction for the highest quality interior design education in the area. Right now I'm in a few studio classes so that focuses on residential design, commercial design, as well as a professional practice and ethics class which we learn about the business side of interior design and how to interview, creating a resume and a cover letter. I thought it was going to be like, this is really interesting, let's pick out these finishes and materials and stuff. There's so much more that you need to know. Codes, specifications for what's appropriate for certain types of environments. I mean, that's all really essential. We will have students present their ideas informally where we put a bunch of things on desktops and we'll go around and share ideas like you would in a design firm. The teacher will act as a client. She will sit down with us and tell us exactly what she needs, uh, what the space will be used for, what kind of products or materials she was looking for, what things she didn't like, what things she does like. We're very tech savvy, meaning that we come out of this school and know, know how to do our drawings the correct way and how, know how to lay them out and be very organized in that because that's very important when you're in the field because you're working with contractors and developers and engineers. It's not just opening a book, it's hearing a teacher who's done before and then seeing it out in the industry and if at any time we can take the student to see something actually occurring, we try to do that. I've had people who have gone on field trips who have said, I never thought I would be interested in retail design until I went on that field trip and now I can't imagine doing anything else. Learn skills such as drafting, sustainable design, CAD, space planning and lighting. Advanced studio courses focusing on residential, kitchen and bath, healthcare, restaurant and retail, or office allow students to build impressive portfolios. In the world of design, it is all about the work. Today's market is competitive, and I think that the ability to build a portfolio that shows uh, your skill set to its utmost is essential. When you look at the student portfolios, they are just there's just a plethora of details and sections, and I think that's what makes architects and designers so apt to have hired these students. We have professionals come and do our portfolio reviews, and they tell me, they tell our dean, that these are as good or better than other portfolio reviews that they've done at other schools. Current and emerging trends are taught by our award-winning faculty of industry professionals dedicated instructors with years of experience. The teachers here are really dedicated to their work 
and the students, and they want the students to succeed. They've all experienced different things, and they're able to share that with us. The professors are absolutely wonderful, very hands-on, and very helpful with all the students. A week doesn't go by when I don't get someone contacting me looking for an intern, looking for an entry-level designer, looking for someone to work on a project. Students really want to be able to get the most uh, value for their dollar, and I think that the College of DuPage offers them that because we have such a core skill set that allows you to be employed with an associate's degree. I am very confident um, to go out there and start my job search. Whether you are preparing for a career in interior design, planning to transfer to a four-year school, or simply updating your skills, visit us on the web and let College of DuPage help you design your future. College of DuPage hosted the annual Dare to Dream Conference, which invites 6th through 8th grade young Latina women to campus with a goal of inspiring them to continue their education. The day consisted of encouraging words from successful Latina women, inspiring group activities, and is a celebration of young Latinas and their futures. The Dare to Dream Conference is a conference for middle school Latina girls. And the conference is to motivate our Latina girls to stay in school. So it's a, a great day, a day of inspiration. In the morning session, we have a keynoter. Um, today, we had Deputy Chief um, Velasquez from the Lombard Police Department. Um, she gave a powerful speech about you know, her obstacles, how she got to where she's at today. And then write down a goal that is so, that's just barely out of reach that you have to get on your tippy toes to achieve and see what you can do. I'm, I bet you can achieve it. We also had Dr. Silva um, presenting on teenage suicide prevention. I'm here today and I'm speaking and I'm alive and there's a great possibility that if I look back and I didn't have strong people that I wouldn't have made it. We are strong, okay? And your parents or whoever's there for you is going to be watching you. And then when you get older, your daughter or your son is going to be watching you. Okay? So today, changes start today. But girls go through a series of programs in which they listen to panelists that are professional Latina women. And then they also hear students that are from college and from high school. I hope that today the participants get um, inspired by one of the stories that they listen to. Every story is different and hopefully one of the participants will get something that will inspire them. They're at the perfect spot where they're willing to learn, they're, they're willing to fight for it. And I think it's a good opportunity to do it now while they're still you know, full of hope before like high school hits them and stuff happens and that's when you feel like, is it worth it? And if we tell them now it's worth it, you know, they're gonna fight for it once they're there.
and we also have a panel for moms and it's in Spanish for them because most of our moms are Spanish speakers so they get information about how to support their daughters, they get resources on how to help their daughters be successful. So yeah, it's just a great conference you know, to inspire our girls. I think it's very encouraging for us young people to keep studying and go to school. Some of the people that spoke today had their ups and downs, but they didn't give up and they still kept going for their dream. I learned that it doesn't matter what race you are and it's very helpful. Well, the speeches that they gave, it's going to help us in the future. It was really fun. Like, I enjoyed coming here. I met two new friends and I learned a lot about it and I feel better in who I am. It's a good event um, because it teaches me how to not give up. I think it's a really great uh, event. It helps us a lot with our kids because most of the times we don't know how to guide them. And programs like this help you help them. It's important for many reasons. The first one is to tell your kids that they can do anything, whatever they want to be, they can do it. In this way, I will give you my help with love, patience, Y sabes que aquí estaré mientras Dios me lo permita, siendo tu apoyo siempre a tu lado en las buenas y en las malas. Te ama tu mamá. At the end, there's a closing session where they come back to the auditorium and meet with the moms, and we have like a letter exchange between the girls and the moms, and it's a really powerful moment. The participants today, I think, will be inspired by hearing all the powerful messages that our speakers have for them. So I definitely think that they will be inspired to, you know, go on to higher education and be successful Latina professional women. College of DuPage continues its commitment to student diversity, developing programs and initiatives to attract and serve our growing, multicultural student population. The Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion improves the cultural environment to support students' academic success and help students engage in their college's social and cultural experiences. The college's commitment to student diversity actually started with the first presidential initiative, RESET, uh, Reconceiving the Student Experience, which then led into the Enhanced Student Implementation Plan and now focuses on student diversity. In this specific uh, initiative, we are focusing on growing enrollments among our African American students. We're focusing on increasing student success, and we want to increase the number of high achieving African American students that we enroll at College of DuPage. Under this initiative, what we've done is we've targeted five African American high achieving students for the Presidential Scholarship Award. I met with three of them at the 2014 scholarship reception, and I could tell you that they could not be more engaged. They were excited, they were enthused about the opportunities. Uh, my name is Juno O'Neill. Um, I received the Presidential Scholarship, and that is a full-ride scholarship. It pays tuition for two years here at the College of DuPage. And these are the kind of things that we're looking to do to get them engaged. Once they're engaged, it means that they're excited. It means that they're ready to get involved. And so by working with them in terms of getting them involved, we wanted to let them know of the opportunities that exist here at the College of DuPage. 
I don't think the College of DuPage is very diverse from what I've seen. I think it's a welcoming place to be, especially for me. I'm not a traditional student in the sense that this is a second career for me, so I'm married with children um, on top of everything, and I, I love it here. It's very welcoming. You look very enthusiastic. Tell me where that comes from. You feel good. Good vibes all the time. Okay. I'm loving college right now. Okay. What about yeah, you? Yeah, it's just the atmosphere, the people. I've got the greatest teachers so far, and I'm just looking forward to what's next. Oh, I love it. It's a new experience, and I'm loving it right now. Okay, awesome. Do you know what you want to study? Uh, right now, I'm studying uh, sports management. I do really like it. I like the, I mean, it is a big school, but it has a small school kind of feel to it. All my classes are really awesome. I have really awesome professors and they're all really good at what they do. I have made so many new friends like within the last couple months than I ever thought I ever would. Um, and I'm pretty sure they're gonna be friends for life. They're really good people. So David Swope, he wanted to create um, like a club specifically for African-American students. And then as we get bigger and bigger, he would gear it more towards, you know, multicultural everybody. So I am involved in that. Um, I'm kind of like an advocate for it. I tell people about it. I think it's important. I feel that uh, a lot of African-American students kind of get discouraged within college. You know, they're surrounded by people who like say that maybe they can't do it or like they feel as though they can't do it. And I don't want people to have to feel that way. You know, I've always been told that you can do anything that you want to do. This is what we do sometimes when we talk about success. We think success is somewhere where we're headed. We think it's a destination, some place where we'll end up. When actually success is just the path that you want. Don't ever be limited by where you are right now. And regardless of what you do, always endeavor to do more. You can do more, you can be more. You're designed to continue to be a success for as long as you can. By working with them in terms of getting them involved, we want to let them know of the opportunities that exist here at the College of DuPage. And we may do that via advisement, via working with our constituents here at the College of DuPage to establish mentoring programs, bridge programs, as well as other programs or endeavors that will not only get them excited, but then get them involved in the process. One of the benefits of having David and uh, the Center for Student Diversity focus on African American students, it complements uh, all our other uh, student recruitment and retention efforts. For instance, we have the Latino Outreach Center, which is doing tremendous work. We have the Center for International Students, which is focusing on uh, the globalization of the College of DuPage. Uh, we have our adult fast track, our veteran student services. So we have a nice organization of individuals specifically focusing on a target audience to complement our entire student body. The Cleve Carney Art Gallery continues to draw artists from around the nation to display their work and engage with the community. In this episode, Images introduces you to Los Angeles artist Gary Noland and his latest work entitled Base Materials. Hi, I'm Gary Noland. I'm here with my exhibition Base Materials at Cleve Carney Gallery. I first met curator Justin Witte at Tiger Strikes Asteroid in Chicago in 2017. And Subsequently, he visited my studio uh, in Los Angeles, and uh, we decided to do an exhibition together. There's a process-oriented piece made from the April 1972 issue of National Geographic called, If Your Six-Year-Old Saw Something Like This, Would He Know How to Phone for Help? I made the first one in 1995, so I had all the National Geographic's in the studio because I was using them for other elements in my, my practice at the time. And I just simply started carving into 
into the issue with an exacto knife. And it was there that it seemed something like a found poem in the magazine. So I've done something in there, collage and photo montage and some, and some editing to generate interest beyond what the original publication of the magazine looked like. So I'm altering the narrative of the, the original narrative of the National Geographic and then subverting it into my own narrative so that there's a meaning within each magazine relating to the one that's next to it. The piece that's on the floor behind me, Anchor, the wood came from a demoed building. The piece of foam was discarded uh, polystyrene. It's called dock foam. And then the, the painted rebar had been in our backyard for maybe 30 or 35 years. It was a tool that my grandfather used. It occurred to me one day I should take this into the studio and see what it can be. And uh, it became a metal apparatus for this sculpture called Anchor that uh, seems to mimic what a boat would look like at the dock with the wooden block being the boat, but the blue foam being the water. So those positions are reversed. Uh, it's a very subtle suggestion of, uh, you know, who's in charge. Then the, the painted rebar gets placed on them and it is in the shape of an anchor. And it, it adds a really important linear element to those blocky wooden and foam shapes. I think it's inherent upon me to make things interesting for people who are looking at them. Just try to find the most common material and employ common verbs to it, like cut and uh, collage and position and glue and to edit and make them something different. Although I agree that they are sculptures, I consider them sort of a, of a uh, dynamic kind of painting. And I consider the paintings different forms of sculpture. And you know, there are really no secrets to anything, how anything is made in this show. It's all things that we find in thrift stores or in an alleyway or or in a dumpster. And it's all these common verbs that I talked about. So I just, I think I want people to uh, come away with feeling that, you know, something else is possible. See Gary's work in person at the Cleve Carney Art Gallery on display through April 6th. For more information, visit clevecarneygallery.org. That wraps up this edition of Images. We hope you enjoyed this program from College of DuPage. And remember, with so much happening at COD, Images is a great way to stay on top of it all. And be sure to watch past episodes on demand at our website, cod.edu. Until next time, I'm Rio Almaria.